Hi, my name's Robin Bergeron. I am in Phoenix, Arizona in the United States of America, aka UTC minus seven. So good morning. Uh, I'm Robin Bergeron on GitHub. I'm R Bergeron, that's R-B-E-R-G-E-R-O-N on IRC. Uh, I'm a community architect on the Ansible community team. Was that all the things, Gundalo? Thank you very much. Um, Tosho. Hi, I'm Tosho Kuratomi. Uh, I am a Badger on GitHub, a Badger 1999 on IRC, and uh, I work with Gundalo on community stuff. I try and do as much programming there as I possibly can. Thank you, uh, Alicia. Oh, no, sorry, you've already done your intro, haven't you? I have. Who else has joined? Uh, Jesse. Uh, Jesse, who's been very busy uh, on GitHub, I see from all the emails. Yeah, Jesse, um, I work outside of the Ansible group, um, uh, but I'm part of Red Hat. Um, I'm just looking after some collections, busy doing migrations of stuff from Core to collections. Um, and I just finished a couple of those, which is quite nice. Uh, it was quite nice to listen into the collections thing um, while I did that. Um, it's not as hard as you think, but it is a bit confusing at first. Anyway. Oh, Jesse. Nice to see you all. Never. Hello. Did you, did, did, you, did you say what your handle was, Jesse? Oh, sorry. On RC and in most places, I'm RDC for me. O-D-Y, S-S-E-Y for me. Excellent. Thank you very much. Because I always find these events are very confusing that people on IRC have real names. Uh, ah, Rick Everard, are you able to talk and say hello? Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, I'm Rick Elrod, R. Elrod on IRC, and uh, I am new to the core team uh, as of about a month ago. So uh, happy to meet everyone and work with everyone and do cool things going forward. Excellent, thank you. Is there anyone joined that hasn't done a little intro yet? Excellent, so what we're gonna do now is go into a bit more detail about the development and the contributor process side of collections. Um, again, any questions at any point, please throw them into IRC, into hash Ansible community. Um, this is also a reminder, um, if you look up a couple of links in IRC, there's a link to a, uh, a Google form. If you complete that, you will get some nice swag. Thanks to Carol, so uh, please do that. Um, yep, so sorry, just trying to find my notes. Yeah, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the status of the collection migration so far and where, where things are up to. Then Matt Davis is going to talk about a thing called tombstoning and routing and how that allows the playbook 2.9 playbooks to work, even though everything's moved into collections. Then Alicia is going to talk a bit about, um, give us a demo of the new doc site. That's a module docs, and we're going to have a bit of a discussion about release notes, which I'm really interested to get people's feedback on. And then Tosho is going to talk a bit about um, the ACD implementation. So if you remember, that's going to be the new package that takes over the Ansible name. Um, Again, we're really interested in your feedback and capturing of user requirements from that. And then I'm going to talk a bit about the contributor process. So 
when we can sort of open the floodgates, where up to with what workflow. Um, hopefully we will have someone to talk about versioning as well. And then we'll sort of um, loop back to the uh, Etherpad to see if there are any other questions that haven't been answered. But again, please keep the questions throwing into IRC. The reason we say that is BlueJeans um, doesn't end up getting logged. Um, so all your excellent feedback uh, gets lost forever, unfortunately. Also, I've just put a link into IRC. So this status, the RST page, I'm going to be, or well, as a collective, we'll be keeping updated as things progress. Um, my screen share would help. Uh, Mr. Davis, I'm going to ignore what you're saying in chat. Uh, yeah, so let me zoom in a bit. So yeah, this is um, the status page. I've just put the link in chat. So we'll keep this updated as things progress. Um, this gets updated every few days or every week as another thing gets done. Um, things have been done. There are a lot of things that are now good. So as we uh, got discussed earlier, the bell is now Ansible based, so it is much smaller. I think someone said it's about a million lines deleted. Um, all of the collection repos have been created, and we have a lot of collections um, that are open for business and just working. So we, any of these collections um, can be, I've just noticed a typo in here. Um, are all open for this. So if we go and look at, say, so any of these you can use Ansible Live for 2.9 or Ansible Base and then do Ansible Galaxy uh, collection install community.grafana or Ansible.windows and then you'll you'll get that stuff. So if we just pick on one of these, so we could also go to Galaxy slash um, or Windows. Oh, let's go there first. But just as a reminder, so we're in the Ansible namespace and we have three collections here, which are NetCommon, POSIX, and Windows. So we can go and click on the Windows one. And we can see that it's on version 001 beta 2, released 24 days ago. Click on content. We can see all the different modules that are in there. So modules hey, hey, yep. Have you? I don't, maybe I missed it, but have you already talked about the difference why some of these are community dot and Ansible dot? I have not. That is a very good point. Thank you. Um, from one one of the long-standing problems that's been had in um, Ansible from business users. So this is people that that pay for support. So what we now call the um, Ansible automation platform is it being clear what is supported and what is not. So one, what you can ring up 1-800 Red Hat and shout at someone to fix. Um, if you remember, uh, as advanced in Ansible 2.9 and earlier, single repo, single package, everything's installed. Some things may say tech preview, supported, community supported, certified, but that was buried away on a, a documentation page or maybe a Red Hat knowledge base article. We could still end up using things that weren't supported. So one of the extra um, nice things that collection gives us is the ability for people to only support install supported bits, or maybe only a sub subset of supported bits. So you can install Ansible Base, which is supported, and then you could install just a supported collection. So they are generally things that start Ansible, so Ansible.posix or Ansible.windows, um, different bits like that. Matt, anything I missed on that? Nope, just wanted to uh, just wanted to point that out, and that even even within the the supported stuff that that just because it start with so Ansible dot isn't the only 
way of knowing that it's supported. But um, in general, I think the expectation is that uh, we will not make supported and unsupported content in collections. Yeah, so hopefully this means that um, the community, the unsupported, the upstream repositories could uh, run a bit faster, maybe a little bit freer. Um, and therefore the supported ones have got maybe some more rigor and review process in, but it means that we don't slow down the community collections. Whether that means the community collections will be increased more, uh, released onto Galaxy, published onto Galaxy, released onto Galaxy more frequently, not sure, but they can be, need be. Um, yeah, so, I guess not everyone may have had a look at the collection yet. I'll just bring up the Grafana repo. I'll put this link in chat. So looking at the Grafana repo, um, so you can see we've got plugins directory starts where most of the code is, and then we have a, a test directory and a galaxy.yaml. So if you've done much with Galaxy before, some of this stuff will look familiar. And link in the chat. Uh, this is pretty simple uh, collection in the sense that it, uh, this line here is quite nice that we don't have any of the dependencies and it's got links back to the uh, individual repo. So if I go to community slash Galaxy um, slash Grafana, see that the last release was three days ago um, and then you've got the readme and again the uh, contents there so the thing that's different with collections versus sort of the code before is that everything's in this plugins directory because if you think about Ansible it's an execution engine it's a plugin loader and then say if we go into plugins then we can see all the, the modules and the modules are the same structure as they as they were in Ansible, you know, you've got the documentation and all the rest. Um, the only thing that is a bit different, and Svart, uh, talked about this stuff before, is that we need to rewrite these, uh, some of the Python imports. You've got this bit here, and put the link in RC, um, which references the new, uh, uh, the new location of this code, which is under this Ansible Collections uh, Python import pass, uh, path. Yeah. Um, so, I guess we should talk a bit about how things were were split up. So, spent a lot of time talking about this in. Uh, Atlanta, so in the last Ansible Fest and since, and um, with the use of um, the statistics stuff that Greg Sutcliffe's done, we could work out if people contributed just to one direction in the Ansible, as in to, say, just to AWS or just to Postgres, or if the people contributed to multiple areas. And based on that, we ended up with collections for everyone that wants them, and everything else ends up in this community.general. Now, I will probably get told off to comparing this to the Ansible modules extra, Ansible modules core type setup, but it's essentially one big repo with, I think, about 800 modules in. Um, so this is the home for everything that doesn't have a specific home, and by that I mean it doesn't have a place um, sorry, it doesn't have a dedicated working group that also wants to maintain a collection. Um, so that doesn't mean that there isn't an active working group looking after this stuff. So if we look in databases, for example, we can see that uh, MySQL and Postgres are here. They're both very well maintained. They've got a good set of people working looking after them. But at the moment, that individual doesn't have the time to maintain a collection. 
however, that may come later on. Um, but for the moment, community.general is the new place for, for things to go. So if you're writing another module that goes alongside one of these, sorry, in one of these existing directories, this will be the place for it to go. Um, however, we will probably be gently discouraging uh, brand new directories. So we wouldn't want maybe a new database directory to be created under here. We'd try and push them to create a, a new collection. And we'd, as in the Ansible community would, team would help maintain and hope we could host that collection. It could live under the GitHub Ansible collections, which is where I am at the moment. Uh, we will also provide CI and you know help with Git work, GitHub workflow and stuff. And I'll talk a bit more about the contributor process later. But we don't want community general to be four thousand, uh, to be five thousand, two thousand, four thousand modules by the end of the year. Right? It, yes, it will probably grow, but we will also move some stuff out. At the moment, there's a lot of networking content in here, and since we did the uh, big migration in the last couple of weeks, we've decided actually that that would that those networking modules would be better in their own collection. So we're going to move those out. Um, but that's sort of where we are at the moment. Uh, you can see the full list of collections here. Um, so under the repo, which I've just put in chat. One of the other things that's a bit different about Community General uh, compared to the other repositories, and the other repositories hosting the collections, is if I just go back into modules. Uh, is that we have the subdirectory still. If you remember um, Grafana and the other collections, they just go straight um, plugins, modules, and then the Python files. Because of the size of community general and because we will need Ansible bot here, we do have the, the topic and subdirectory, so cloud slash atomic or database slash MySQL in there. Uh, the question about adding extra uh, repositories. So things can go into the community namespace. We're happy to help host the collections and bits help with that. Uh, I'll pause to see if there's any questions on on that side before we get into some more of the technical detail. Uh, yes, logos. We it would be cool if we had some different logos for supported versus other bits. Uh, branding is difficult. Okay. Um, so you may notice that community general isn't one of the uh, collections and repositories that's open for business yet. Uh, just been a slow trickle of PRs in, and we're deliberately keeping that slow at the moment because um, uh, the CI isn't uh, green yet. Uh, that said, Felix Fontaine has been doing an amazing job at uh, getting all that stuff set up. Um, I'm now going to pass over to, because there don't seem to be any questions, I'm going to pass over to Matt Davis. Who's going to talk a bit about uh, routing and tombstoning, what they mean and why they're needed for to help uh, two to nine playbooks run? Thanks for that. Um, <clears throat> I will just for a second here. Have a topic and also. Paste um, a paste a link to the PR the the kind of whip PR for this, but uh, so yeah, this is a this is one of the things that um, I know I've been thinking about this for a really long time. Like, okay, how do we you know we're gonna we're gonna pull we're gonna move all these things out of the Ansible core, but if we just say like, sorry, you got to rewrite all your playbooks now to use these fully qualified names or um, <clears throat> I think that that would not go over very well. Uh, <laughs> that it's just not. That, it's not. That, that would not go over very well. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think that's that's a understatement of the year, right? So uh, that I that was one of my personal just kind of pet projects with this thing is like, what do we have to do to make all this stuff continue to work transparently when we move it around? And what infrastructure can we put into Ansible to make this better? Um, so there's some there's some interesting problems to solve there, and they're, they're, they fall into a few categories, right? So modules are kind of the easiest, right? Like if I I don't want to go too much into the details of how Ansible works, but there's there's basically a couple of there there are kind of three major classifications of of problems that we have to solve here. Uh, <clears throat> anything that that goes through our our normal plugin loader uh, has one set of problems to solve. So it's like, okay, we have a, kind of a managed thing that that is uh, not a direct Python import. There's a whole process of like, uh, you know, when we go to resolve something through the plugin loader, it goes through all the configured uh, extra directory, the built-in directories and the extra directories for whatever the plugin type is. So, you know, this is like modules, module utils, uh, uh, filters, tests, lookups, uh, you know, all these actions, all these kinds of things. Uh, inventory plugins, connection plugins. There's a, a bunch of different kinds of things. The things that go through the collection or through the plugin loader are relatively easy to solve. Um, <clears throat> but we still have the problem of like we need to preserve the old behavior. So people that are used to having a library directory next to their content or whatever, that those things will continue to work. Uh, but that when you're when we load these things from a collection uh, that we're able to go find it in the collection um, <clears throat> as well without breaking those existing playbooks. You know, if we said, oh, well, we're going to look up, we're going to just, if whenever we see this name, we're going to go look for a collection first. Uh, we're going to, we, we know where it went, so we're going to look it up at a collection. That would break everybody that's using a library directory override for one of those things. Or, you know, we didn't, we, we, we just can't break stuff that way. So, or we don't want to break stuff that way. That was, that, that's been, you know, that's been an internal argument for a long time. You know, there's a lot, there's, there's definitely, there are camps that are like, forget it, just break it. Like it's, it's fine. And there are others that, that are, <laughs> that try to take that a little more, you know, <laughs> that, that take that a little more seriously that, that says, you know, every time we break someone's playbook, that's an opportunity that someone has to go and look at another tool and say, oh, maybe, other other tool would do this better if I have to rewrite all my stuff anyway. So I really I really personally don't think that's a good a good plan. So <clears throat> so the stuff that goes through the plugin loader is one thing. That one's relatively easy to solve. Um, so the way we handled that is that there's there's a new uh, there's a new feature in Ansible uh, in the Ansible guts called routing that uh, at least it's currently what it's called and it's in that PR that I linked. Uh, <clears throat> Ansible, the Ansible base distribution itself, as well as any collections, are able to define some, some metadata that say, hello, I used to have a thing called this, um, and now it lives in this place. And so it, it, it's just, you know, it allows you to define a, a, a redirection from one place to another. You can't hijack a name that you don't own. So all of these things are based upon the fact that someone came to your collection and asked you for a plugin named X. And if you have an entry in your routing file for that, you can say, oh, actually, I don't have X anymore. X lives over here and, and point it out to another, uh, another collection. Uh, you can also point it to another place in your own collection. You can also point it to, uh, you, can, you can put a deprecation on it. So any plugin can support a deprecation this way now. Uh, you can also do say this has been removed. So when we run into one of those, it would just be a like, you know, I didn't find it, but at least you can put a message to someone that says, hey, this thing that you were looking for has been removed instead of just like, sorry, not found. Um, you know, that you could give, hey, this has been removed and maybe you should use this other module that isn't maybe interface compatible, but like at least here's something else that provides that contact or that, that functionality now. So, the whole point of this routing uh, pull request is to keep everything working. We use that exact same mechanism inside Ansible base for all of the things that came out. Um, if you're, for those of you that have been using collections for a while, you'll know there's a, there's a built-in collection called Ansible.builtins that, uh, or Ansible.builtin that uh, we used for all of the stuff that shipped in the box with Ansible. And 
So we're using that exact same uh, routing uh, metadata for the Ansible.built-in collection to point out at things that used to be in Ansible.built-in but now have moved to some other place. So you'll, if you look in that PR, you'll see that the uh, there's a routing.yml file in the config directory that has uh, all of the stuff that used to be in core and where does it live now. Uh, those were those were kind of the big things. There there are some smaller ones. That, there's there's a couple other classifications that that were a little more interesting uh, that required some special behavior. Uh, one of them was uh, like direct Python imports. So uh, this would be like non plugins uh, or sorry non module plugins that directly imported things from like Ansible.module utils or whatever. That's a different classification of problems to solve because those kinds of plugins weren't they weren't loading that stuff through the plugin loader, they were doing direct Python imports. So we had to do some a little bit of Python loader magic to make that work, but that is also supported. So if you had written like an action plugin or an inventory plugin or some other thing that gets loaded directly into the controller and does imports from things that used to be in Ansible that are no longer in Ansible, those things should also continue to work. Um, there's some more work ongoing on that to fill in the routing files and things to make sure that that those things continue to work that way. But uh, that that is another another set of problems that that was needing to be solved. The third one that just needed some special handling was is still kind of a special case of the plugin loader one, and that was Jinja plugins. Um, there was some some special behavior required there to to make. Uh, you know, a Jinja plugin that was mo uh, that was moved out of Ansible core and into a collection work. And also in the future, you know, you could do the same thing in collections. So if your collection defined a filter plugin that moved to someplace else, you can make a routing entry for it and it will properly redirect it to to its final location. So it was just it's it's kind of a special case of the um, <clears throat> of the. Uh, the plugin loader related loads, but there's also some of the Python import magic and some Jinja environment magic and some other stuff in there. So there were three kind of large classifications of those things that we had to solve. And uh, the, 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 the base infrastructure is there to support all of those things. And, uh, you know, the, the, the majority of the stuff that people use the most has been filled out in the routing file in that PR, but some of the other ones like the direct imports still need uh, some work. And there are a couple of, bugs that uh, Felix Fontaine and others have found uh, as we started testing these on the real migrated collections, uh, you know, the, the, there's a couple of bugs that have been found. So I've, I've been working on getting those things fixed. So, uh, but the hope is to get this thing merged uh, pretty, pretty quickly here. And this will be the thing that will kind of enable the rest of the, um, the ACD uh, the, the ACD package to be tested against existing content. You know, once we have this PR merged and uh, the we start doing some ACD kind of alphas or whatever you want to call it against, uh, you know, publish those to PyPI or whatever, th that's the point where we want people to go and start running these things on your 2.9 playbooks and say like, hey, if you have all these collections installed and all this stuff, your playbooks should just work. And if they don't, it should it's a bug and we want to know about it. So I think that's... Uh, that's all I have to say about that one. If anyone, I don't know if there's questions or if we want to just give Gundala wants to move on. Yeah, I guess one one other thing uh, that I can sort of mention on this is this is the feature that allows us to change where we put things after. So as I said, um, community general at the moment is the the home for otherwise homeless content, or at least. For people that don't want to maintain the collection, we're going to try and move stuff a bit around a bit between now and 2.10 being released because that's just a bit cleaner. But if in 2.11 or some point later someone says, you know what, I want to take ownership of the MySQL modules, we can move them again out of Community General um, and send a new MySQL uh, collection. And things will continue to work, so it uh, gives us some flexibility in the future. Um, are there any other questions? I can't tell if Jimmy C had a question or if he was just being snarky. Uh, Jimmy said probably snarky. Um, I see there's some questions about packaging. So in a little bit, we'll be talking about ACD. 
Um, so we'll talk about the different packaging options there. Um, cool. Um, doesn't look like there's any of a question, so thank you very much. Um, so if Alicia is there, we'll talk a bit about um, documentation. Yep, I'm here. Um, so hi again, folks. For those who joined since I did my intro, my name is Alicia Cozine. I'm a Cozine on GitHub and also on IRC. Um, and I am the lead technical writer for Ansible. Um, and I recently updated some things on my machine that mean I cannot um, screen share. So Gondolo is going to screen share for me. Uh, but hope and uh, we'll we'll uh, keep that updated through back channels. Um, so I have two main things to talk about. One is a little bit of a, and now you see how sausage is made presentation about the roadmap for module documentation as we move forward Ansible 2.10. And then the other one is about ACD change logs, which we talked about briefly earlier, and we can go into a little more detail. So um, documentation in a collections um, ecosystem. Um, I don't know, maybe you can show mm -hmm. the main um, 2.9 module index page. Uh, let's see. Yep, Ansible latest. <laughs> if you just scroll down the left, yeah, there you go. You're way ahead of me. Okay. So probably most people here are familiar with this page. Um, this index page in 2.9 was generated out of the directory um, hierarchy within the Ansible Ansible repo. So um, we had lib Ansible modules cloud, and under that we had all the various different um, flavors of cloud modules. And um, that hierarchy was turned into this index. Each individual module, um, so if you want to click down, click through to a, pick a module, any module. Um, so you, if you look at the individual modules, um, and you look at the URL for that, so this may be something that People who aren't uh, people who aren't writing and and using the documentation regularly maybe have never noticed, but that the URLs for that were a flat instruction. So each module was under modules slash module name underscore module dot html. I'll say that again. The modules directory in the URL contained one entry per module, all at the same level. So those index pages um, were a helpful addition, but they didn't actually reflect how the modules were being, how the module documentation was being built. Moving ahead into the collections universe, um, the first challenge we ran into is that once you distribute modules around, you can no longer enforce unique names. So we can't publish documentation this way anymore starting in 2.10. And in fact, we have already seen some module cha module name changes within collections, particularly um, modules that used to be called thingy underscore user. Um, now that they're in a collection that's devoted entirely to thingy, whatever thingy might be, they are being renamed into just user. So we're going to have multiple um, modules called user, which means we can't publish documentation for them all at modules slash user underscore module dot html. So that was one of our first challenges. Um, 
The second challenge that we immediately saw in this process was how to version the module docs. So one of the main goals of moving to collections was to stop enforcing a single cadence on the development of everything within the Ansible ecosystem. And by that, I mean um, version 2.8 and version 2.9. Um, when those releases were made, whatever changes had been had gotten in under the wire for modules were included in those versions. But after that, um, if you had a new feature uh, or another pressing change in your module, then you had to wait for the next version with collections. That's no longer a constraint. So you can release a new version of your collection with that new feature or functionality, um, and it will be available immediately. So for us on the docs team, the question was, how are we going to present that documentation? Are we going to try to version it based on the collection version numbers? Um, are we going to provide documentation for multiple versions? This could quickly um, escalate beyond our capacity to present documentation currently because each new change on Galaxy currently represents a new version of the collection. So those were the two main things we were thinking about at the beginning of this process. Um, and the first iteration we came up with, and Gundalo, if you could show that um, collections overview page from the testing site. I don't know if you have them preloaded. I can't tell from your tabs. Uh, yeah, okay, that'll do. So this, this, is, um, this is from the testing site. Um, those of you who work on docs are probably used to looking at the testing site. Those of you who aren't, um, just be aware that it is, uh, it's not set up for HTTPS, so uh, if you start seeing um, 404s that maybe or can't connect, that's, uh, that may be part of the reason. Also, um, many of the links on the testing site are hard-coded to go back to the production site. So again, if you see something you're not expecting, that might be the problem. Um, with those caveats in place, uh, we do publish documentation that's under development to the testing site. Uh, the site changes without notice frequently, um, so don't expect anything to live there for long. Okay, I think I've hedged that enough. Um, so this is an example of the first iteration we had of producing module documentation onto the testing site. You'll notice here that the URL changed, um, even the top level. So instead of uh, docs.ansible.com slash Ansible, this one would be docs.ansible.com slash collections. So we had pulled collections documentation entirely out into a separate universe. This is not the way we're moving forward. So I just wanna tell you that. This is what we have to work with on the testing site right now. Some things will look like this. Um, You'll notice here that the, um, the Galaxy uh, namespace for storage and the collection name, which is Flash Array, are both represented in the URL. And then we have um, the module name as it used to be. So module name underscore module.html. Um, if you go up to, let me... Oh, so Grendel, I just passed you a link. I could pass these in the main chat. Um, so this is what the collection level documentation will look like. So the the um, index of plugins for a particular collection would show the module type and then the uh, individual 
uh, plugins within that. Um, so I, I talked a little bit about, uh, actually I'll pause and see, are there any questions? I haven't been looking at chat. Unrelated. Just one quick clarification here, or not a clarification, but just a just a reminder that uh, collections. We've been talking a lot about plugins, but collections also contain roles. So, like they're, uh, and I think the docs side of that, uh, as the like docs and and uh, like arg spec and stuff, is still kind of an open question that has not been resolved yet. Is that right, Alicia? That is correct. Um, so the main challenge that we faced with this. Uh, again, right at the beginning was that Galaxy currently provides some form of documentation for roles. Um, I don't know how happy people are with it, but at least it exists. In its current iteration, Galaxy provides no way to see technical documentation for an individual module within a collection. Um, so if we did nothing, then with 2.10, the module documentation as we know it today would disappear. Um, we obviously wanted to maintain the module documentation in some form, but yes, you're right. I, I mean, there are many, many, many open questions and so much room for um, expansion, new development, um, improvement over what we have. Uh, there's, there's a lot to do in short in documentation. Our main focus right now is uh, leave no docs behind in the transition, um, but there's a lot more that we could do, including publishing um, documentation on roles within the collection documentation. Thanks, Matt. Um, any other questions or comments? No, okay. Um, so with, with the, um, with the creation of ACD, uh, with this idea that we are going to have a versioned package that will provide a, a replacement for or a similar functionality to the old batteries included model, um, we have decided to version the documentation in in concert with ACD. So instead of the URLs you've been seeing with slash collections, it'll be um, slash Ansible slash version number like we've seen before, except instead of tracking, ultimately instead of tracking the releases of Ansible base, it will track the releases of ACD. Um, and this allows for the cadence, the release cadence moving forward to do what best serves the community. Um, another place where we've gone through a couple of iterations, uh, another place where you're gonna see some sausage being made, I think, is um, how to redirect from the old URLs to the new. A lot of people have a lot of blog posts out there, a lot of links, uh, you know, a lot of bookmarks and so on that point to certain pages. Um, with the URLs all changing, we, we're gonna need to, to help people find the new locations of those docs. Um, we are currently leaning toward maintaining uh, actual redirects. Um, if anyone has experience maintaining this large number of redirects, um, I would love to hear from you. I'm trying to gather information on how to do that and stay sane. I'm sure we're not the only ones facing this, but I personally don't have experience with it. So um, speak up if, if you do. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> uh oh, not good or recent. Well, uh, yeah, there's a comment in the chat. From Greg, uh, that is that is not heartening, but we will uh, we will hope for we will hope that more recent experience is perhaps better. Um, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, we did we did go through uh, testing of stub pages um, where we would post a page at the old 
URL saying, hey, the documentation that used to be here has moved, and here's where you can go look at it. Um, but that requires extra clicks, and it also means that um, search engines won't update as quickly, if ever, to the new location. And we want to get as quickly as possible to a place where people are one click away from the documentation that they need. Um, any questions about module documentation? And then if not, I'm going to move on to um, talking about change logs a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, I'll just point out one thing that was based on chat. So, you know, this is for the, as long as you follow the same process that you did in Ansible Ansible, uh, module docs, or, um, you know, it's the same format, module docs and plugin docs. Um, Please do, if you're running your own collections, do run Ansible tests on the That has a load of checks um, that spot common issues with documentation. I think it also runs Ansible, Ansible doc as well. Um, if you don't run Ansible test on the you will quickly find that your collection will have broken docs. Um, and that makes everyone sad. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we, this will be an adventure uh, since we had a lot of control over documentation in the single repo model, um, and we have less control with the distributed model. Um, but I think everyone is motivated to keep documentation available for users. So I'm hoping that this will um, go fairly well. All right, change logs. Um, so I mentioned this a little bit earlier. <clears throat> Within the Ansible Ansible repo, um, we have maintained change logs, uh, really complete, not to say tediously detailed at times, um, change logs for each release. Um, we have also cherry picked the most important changes from the change log and created pages we've called porting guides. Um, the porting guides are fairly heavily trafficked. Um, oh yes, I was going to show one or show the index page. Yep. So we've we've traditionally published one porting guide per major version. They include a lot of information for playbook authors about how to um, how to upgrade their playbooks, what to look out for, um, mm -hmm. just giving them heads ups about uh, major changes that might affect them. So this is a very useful thing to have, and um, we would like to continue doing that in the new ecosystem. The question is how? And in thinking about that, um, I've been thinking about three specific kinds of users. So there's the developer of a certain collection um, who probably needs to know in great detail, just as they do now from the change logs in the Ansible Ansible repo. Um, what has changed. So things that would never affect the end user but might affect fellow developers need to go somewhere. Uh, the second user group that I'm thinking of is specific users of a single collection. So these are people who, for example, <clears throat> are um, Let's, let's talk about a user who has pressed for a piece of new functionality in a, in a module. That module is now in a collection. This user has a use case that's going to use that new functionality. Um, they will be installing that collection, a more recent version of that collection than the version that is included in ACD, potentially. So, when we talk about the cadence changing, um, it's 
it's changing on a number of different levels. And one potential use case moving forward is that we have people um, using more recent versions of certain collections, even as they use the latest released version of other collections. So for those users, we need a collection specific change log that tells them these are the main changes in, say, the last five releases of this collection. And then at the ACD level, we need a more generic. So for a user who's just upgrading from, let's say, a year from now, or I don't know what the timelines are. I won't put a date on it. Uh, a user who's upgrading from ACD 2.10 to ACD 2.11, if that's the next thing that comes down the pike. And they want to know what to look for in their playbooks and how to upgrade them. They probably need a slightly less detailed version than that collection-specific mm -hmm. user I was talking about. So those are the use cases we're looking at. Um, we're having conversations in the Ansible docs um, about how to address those. We're looking at a couple of different tools. Uh, looks likely that we will move away from how the Ansible Ansible repo managed, uh, certainly the way the Ansible Ansible repo has managed porting guides in the past, which has been manual edits to an RST page. Um, so ongoing conversation, uh, I would love to hear from lots of people, uh, whether you have an idea or just a use case that you want to make sure we don't lose sight of, um, please join the conversation. And with that, I will pause again for questions. And um, I see there's been a lot of chat on IRC. Um, can't tell if any of it is stuff we need to address um, this channel or not. Yeah, I think everything that's been talked about in IRC has been covered. Um, Alicia, I have, I have a question. What's your confidence level? How are you feeling about this process and how users are going to feel about the end result? I am confident that we will find a solution. My biggest concerns are, number one, I think the documentation publication may trail uh, releases a little bit, at least for the first one or two ACD releases. Um, that's not something I'm used to. Um, I'm used to our documentation actually being ahead of the curve, um, and it's something we've been super proud of, uh, both of the team and of the community, that Ansible documentation has been um, really well maintained compared to other projects that I'm used to working with. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit of... Um, it, it, it's a little uncomfortable for me to say, well, we, we may we may lag a little bit. Um, that said, it's not unusual, and I think we can get back to where we were eventually, but I think the collections transition will um, take some time. The other thing I'm concerned about is communication. And I think earlier when the, uh, there were some questions and confusion about collections, um, I heard that we have a communication deficit. We are not communicating uh, well enough to keep the community up to date. And if we are not keeping the community up to date, then for sure the broader user group is not up to date. Um, that is partly because mm -hmm. we haven't had, um, you know, we, we, the whole thing has been under development, so it has been a moving target. Um, but I am concerned about getting information out there about collections in general and also about how they affect the documentation so that people who are 
used to just going to modules slash and type in the module name and getting the information they need and begin to understand how to replicate that in the new collections ecosystem. Did that answer your question, Greg? It did, and I share those concerns. So I'm, I'm glad you are worried about the same things I'm worried about. It means it's more likely that we won't lose track of them. Other questions about documentation? Are there folks out there who I've, I've done a lot of talking about collections and the collections transition and ACD and again, based on what we talked about earlier, it's clear that there may be people in, in this group who are sitting there thinking, what on earth is she talking about? Um, if that's you, um, please pipe up and say, I lost you at collections transition or I don't understand what you were saying about the URLs changing or gosh, I've never used the porting guide before. I think that's unlikely, but whatever it is, um, please let us know because um, I'm, A, I'm happy to go back over anything that I've said and put in more detail or explain it. And also, um, as Greg and I have both been talking about, this gives us a better handle on where we are with communication. We, we know it's a problem, we know it's an issue, we know it's a challenge. Um, we don't necessarily know how far behind we are, if that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much for all those explanations. Um, I think we have to let this settle a bit. I thought I'd just pipe up and say something. Thanks, JP. It's a big change and it's a lot to take in. Um, I think it provides some really great opportunities. Um, it also has some challenges, but I think we'll, and I'm, I'm talking both about documentation and about the bigger picture, but I think we'll get there. All right, we're at the top of the hour. Do we wanna, I don't, I'm not sure when, how long this goes. Do we wanna take another break or Gundalo, do you have another speaker lined up? Uh, next will be Tosho talking about ACD. Did you want to say anything about the change log bit? Uh, well, I, t I talked a bit I about guess, yeah, yeah. Let, I'll, I'll just throw the link in chat, I guess. Um, Great. yeah, I think that was a probably good point. Uh, 15 minute break, let people stretch their legs again, grab some more coffee. Um, Honestly, for me, thank you for saying that the treats and snacks are great. Um, maybe you could share some with them. But yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, 15 minute break, everyone. Thanks. And then when we're back in 15 minutes, Toshio will talk about ACD.